Joining us now on the economy, private equity, and more, Scott Sperling, co-CEO of THL uh, Partners. Um, last time that you were here, you I didn't know whether you were buying or selling, or yeah, I think you were doing a little bit both on an, on we, an individual. We, we've been doing a lot of selling over the course of the last few years. We have been trying to buy, but frustrated at valuations. Um, and I think that's not an atypical story for folks in our industry. When I talk to my friends who run other private equity firms, I think we're all a little bit frustrated by the uh, disconnect still between valuation uh, and um, what you think the long-term value of an asset would be. And that is a reflection of cheap money formerly? I think it's a, re it, yeah, it's a reflection of people there are, uh, there's a lot of money out there in almost every aspect of the financial market, as we know, um, and there are people making decisions about either long-term exit multiples that may be somewhat different than where some of us are. Um, I think there are many of us who are in the, rates aren't ridiculously high at all, but there, and there will be cuts, but it's still going to be higher longer for lots of very fundamental reasons that you know, we've talked about and I'm happy to go into. Um, and therefore, multiples should reflect that. The money is has been generated organically from productivity and corporate earnings and a good economy, or is it still? Uh, well, so I, I think in, pri in private equity, the you know the outperformance over almost any period, generally for the private equity industry, has been quite strong. So I think there's a rational amount of money being put into private equity, and I think returns will continue to be better than in other asset classes. Um, I think right now there is a movement to try to buy the very best business models and the so-called great companies, and the premium put on that may or may not be appropriate. I think for some of us, we think it may be inappropriate, but you know we'll see in a few years. Do you think your business could be better if there was less regulation, less antitrust issues, more energy development. But you see where well, I'm going, yeah, you see where I, I'm going I with this. Do you care about the election? Could it be better for you, or is it good so now? I, I, think, I think it's certainly it's good uh, now. better. It's it certainly could be better, better um, if we had a, a regulatory environment that, that was less cumbersome and where the um, ability of the regulators was within the bounds of what we have historically thought they should be. So particularly antitrust uh, is an area that I think is um, uh, important to people in our industry, but you know more broadly as well. I think the entire regulatory burden on the economy seems quite high when you look at it. Um, certainly being able to reduce the cost of energy is a big positive for all consumers. All right. And that's something that that 10 I think tariffs, we need to work more on. tariffs. That would be bad from from the the, the orange guy. When when you hear, you know, well, we ha we we have to see what actually happens. Okay. I mean, Last tar night, when, targeted when you hear tariffs. The, the head of the country say, yes. corporations have doubled their profits. They're the ones that cause inflation. So we, when you hear we, that, does it does it bother you? Well, does it matter? That, does well, it matter? Well, we know that's not true. We actually. know it's not true, but does it so, matter? You have um, the guy. I, I think it's somewhat problematic, but not unexpected in a very heated election, okay. particularly one where there's a, an even bigger difference between where um, one party has centered and where the other party has centered. And those centerings are not necessarily in the center. So you're hearing more extreme commentary from you know, each side. And the, side. I think the answer hopefully will tend to be more in the middle and particularly um, as one thinks about the set of policies, I think the observation that that um, Trump will, um, will will talk to a set of policies that directionally will go in, but not to the magnitude that he may state. Are you planning on a Trump presidency? Well, the odds, the betting odds, are clearly that. I think it's a you know, it's a lifetime, as they say, between now and the election. Yeah. Lots of things can happen, including uncertainty about who his opponent might be. Um, I would have to believe at this point Biden's still the, the odds-on favor oh, to be the Democratic nominee, but obviously there is growing concern in the party 
concern being a nice word, mm -hmm. that he may not be capable of doing the job but he or winning won't the do, election. He won't do unrealized gains, That's but he talks about it, but he probably won't well, do it. He won't do 50% I mean, capital gains, even though they, 46, yeah. whatever, they, that won't happen you know, either. Over time, we'll have to see where, the, where, where, where that goes. Obviously, we are running huge deficits, which long term will have a big impact on our ability to manage interest rates down because that takes on a life of its own away from the Fed. When you have to finance tens of trillions of dollars of uh, government debt, you tend to have to pay a lot more for that. So that can have a big impact there. I think when you look at uh, overall, the, the reason we're running these huge deficits is obviously government spending has been a bigger and bigger part of the economy. Mm -hmm. When you look on the revenue side, even with the so-called tax cuts that occurred, uh, revenue is not diminish significantly from where it normally is. It's, it's the nature of the spending. If you compare 2019 to where we are for the next fiscal year, you have to ask yourselves, yeah, I understand why we spent a lot of money, trillions of dollars, right. during that pandemic. That was a, probably a good thing to do. Maybe did some things we shouldn't have done, but probably a pretty good thing. Why is the level of government spending still now still growing from that level as opposed to return to where it was? with capital being more efficiently deployed in the private sector. Leesman knows by there's some term that begins with an H for Y. The amount you spend on a crisis, you never stop. Once you never you get, stop. Once you get it going, it's like you, you did it, that's, so let's keep that's, going. That's the new baseline. Now, look, we have a major energy transition that's going to cost in the trillions of dollars when you run through that. We have defense spending that, by almost every commentary coming out of the NATO summit, is inadequate Hello. for in the U.S. as well as in other right. parts of the world. So there's already other pressures, and the amount of money we're spending for interest rate uh, payments right. uh, as a government are also okay. have also grown enormously. So, you know, now flip side. Lots of it, great technologies being developed, both on the IT side and the healthcare side. Okay. Uh, there you go.